everybody. How are you doing today? All right, excited. Well, my name is Hirsch Trevetti. I'm a junior here at the Oak Ridge School, and I just have a kind of rhetorical question I want to give you. Don't answer it right now. Just think about it, all right? Who is really in control? So we're on the cusp of a new revolution here in the scientific community. Genetics is taking over as the new burgeoning field that will show our world what we can do in regards to diseases, in regards to genetic engineering, cloning, and how the world will progress in the future. But what is DNA, right? If you think about it, DNA literally is the blueprint to your life. We've heard this in your biology book and all this, but it literally truly is the blueprint. That's such a beautiful analogy. And just recently, about, for about 13 years, it took about 13 years and over a billion dollars, and we managed to sequence the human genome, one person's genome. We're on the, the edge, right? Give it maybe five more years, I'd say. You can go out to Walgreens or Costco and actually pay $1,000 and have your whole genome sequenced. From a billion and 13 years to five minutes and $1,000. We're moving at such an incredible rate that th we cannot possibly ignore genetics any longer. So imagine this, right? Where does your DNA come from? It comes from your mom and your dad, right? They decide you. A human has about 46 chromosomes, not about, sorry, you have 46 chromosomes. 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad, and that makes you up. Have you ever noticed weird little things your mom does or your dad does? You're like, no way, I would never do that. Don't worry, you do do that. That comes from your DNA. Your eye color, your hair color, the way you act, what you're afraid of, all these things can actually be traced back to your DNA and the sequence of the DNA, which is actually called genetics. So if you think about this, you're actually stuck, aren't you? Right? If you think about it, your mom gives you 23 chromosomes, your dad gives you 23 chromosomes, so you will be basically 50% dad, 50% mom. But we know that this isn't true, don't we? So if your dad had Alzheimer's, your mom had Alzheimer's, your grandfather had Alzheimer's, that's basically saying you will have Alzheimer's, right? I'm here to tell you that that's wrong. You yourself are in control of what happens to you, all right? So let me give you a word, epigenetics. Never heard of it, have you? Don't worry. Neither did I until just this summer. But think about it. We just now def defined what genetics is, right? Now think about epi, the prefix. What does it mean? It means above. So basically, epigenetics is like above genetics. It's like what you can do to genetics without actually changing genetics itself. So if you make changes about where DNA is used, you're applying epigenetic mechanisms, to say. And the things that affect this is environment. So obviously, none of us live in this kind of idyllic environment. But if you're subject to secondhand smoking, or you don't get a lot of sleep, or you're always in a lot of stress, you overeat, you undereat. Every type of thing that happens in the environment can affect you and what will happen to you. So let's take this one step at a time, right? We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. What really is DNA? If you think about it, it truly is these A's, C's, T's, and G's, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, which is just a bunch of words, don't worry. We know that they're base pairs. You guys, high school, we know what's up. But parents, don't worry. Some of you do know, but it's just a bunch of letters. But these letters, when they're paired together, they actually somehow magically tell our body to do this, tell our body to be able to let us move, to think. How does that happen? Our body, the blueprint, that blueprint DNA comes back, that analogy. So think of the DNA as the blueprint, the architect, per se, for your house. And your house itself, the bricks, the builders that make it, are your proteins. So DNA gets turned into mRNA. And then that gets turned into protein. You know, just technical stuff, it's okay. But the DNA gets turned into mRNA. The mRNA goes to a part of the cell and gets turned into proteins, which are the actual things that make us run. Proteins make up your cell membrane, they make up your blood, they make up your cells, they make you, you, right? And what happens if the DNA sequence that you have is m mutated? So say the sequence is ACGT, say it's ACCT. And that protein then makes mRNA, then goes to protein, right? That protein that's now created is going to be malfunctioning somehow, right? It's going to be messed up in some way, and that is basically how genetic diseases come about. And we now know that most diseases, pretty much all diseases, have some genetic component in them. 
So if we can regulate this kind of thing and change, because after all, we use about 5 or 6% of your DNA total. If we took the DNA in one of our cells, of which we have like a trillion, and unraveled that DNA, it'd be three meters long in one cell. So it's wrapped up tight, right? And you only use a portion of that for this amazing being called the human being. And when that one little bit is misplaced, so you have a higher, pro, a higher chance of getting cardiovascular disease or something, epigenetics allows you to move or cause that area to be turned off and move to a different part. So you can actually say, no, I don't want a basement here. I want my basement over here. You can change your house, your body, you. You can change yourself based on epigenetics. Now, we face a lot of challenges these days, right? There is, <laughs> just take a look at this, stress, smoking, not getting enough sleep, obesity. This is actually a, a little cartoon. It's cut off a bit, but it says, what fits your busy, busy schedule better? Exercising one hour a day or being dead 24 hours a day? So these types of things, the environment you put yourself in and the way that you interact with this environment can actually change your DNA. So imagine this scenario. Your father has cardiovascular disease, your mom has heart problems, and your grandfather died of a heart attack. Based on what we know today and the genetics that run through your family now, you will have some form of cardiovascular problem before you die, or it will be the cause of your death. If you take these epigenetic considerations into hand, we've heard about this on the news all the time, right? Go out, exercise, eat healthy, all this stuff that we hear about all the time, we're like, yeah, 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 I know what's up. But actually, if you go out and do it, if you take these things with this scientific background and affect it, you don't just affect what physically shows up. You affect what's going to affect you in the long term. You change how you will act 20 years from now, a day from now. Have you ever noticed that after you exercise, you feel a lot better? Obviously, this is like short-term endorphins, kind of happy stuff goes off in your brain. But overall, that changes and makes a trend for you to be more happy, a more lively person. So overall, you can change the way that you are. So if we really take that question into consideration, who really is in control? You are. Thank you.